All right, this is Physics 151, Quiz 3. Which of these is the energy required to break the bonds of a solid to convert it to a liquid? All right, specific heat is the amount of energy to raise a certain mass of substance by a certain temperature. Uh, heat of fusion is from a solid to a liquid or liquid to a solid. And then heat of vaporization is uh, from a liquid to a gas. So the answer here is B. Which of these is a mode of heat transfer? Uh, let's see, it's not separation or specific heat, it's convection. Uh, that's like in a convection oven when you have uh, air currents that are flowing. So it's by the flow of a fluid. What is the temperature in degrees Celsius of a person with a fever of 105 degrees Fahrenheit? You can look on your equation sheet. T degrees Celsius is equal to uh, 5 ninths T in degrees Fahrenheit, which in this case is 105 minus 32. And so that's 5 ninths uh, times 73. I get 41 degrees Celsius. So it's D. The Sunshine Bridge is primarily made of steel and has an estimated length of 2,500 meters. How much does the bridge expand if the temperature increases from 20 degrees Celsius to 38 degrees Celsius? Um, and then there's the coefficient of linear expansion. Uh, delta L is equal to L naught alpha delta T. L naught is the original length. That's 2,500 meters. Alpha is 12 times 10 to the minus 6. That's in uh, 1 over degrees Celsius. And then my change in temperature is going to be 38 minus 20. That's 18 degrees Celsius. It changes by 18 degrees Celsius. And I get 0.54 meters. That's 54 centimeters. That's a half a meter. That's pretty big. Right, which of these has the highest density? Which of these has the highest density? Uh, all right, well, of these, iron is going to have the highest density. Uh, if you were to place them in order, it would be cotton with the lowest, uh, followed by wood, followed by water, followed by iron. If you want to think about it, you can think about it in terms of what floats and what. So iron sinks in water, so its density is higher than that of water. And both wood and cotton both float in water, so their density is lower than that of water but iron has the highest density. Why are temperatures in coastal areas more temperate? For example, San Francisco is cooler in the summer and warmer in the, in the, uh, in the winter. This is because uh, the specific heat of water is very high. So in the winter time, the water around San Francisco gets cold. And then as it goes through the summertime, that water stays cool, which keeps the land cool as well. Uh, and then throughout the summer, the water heats up. And then through the winter, that water stays warm, gradually cooling off, and keeps the land mass warmer. All right, how much perspiration must a person evaporate to get rid of 50,000 calories of heat? All right, Q is equal to M times the latent heat of vaporization. So I, I want to know what is M. So M is equal to Q over LV. That's 50,000 calories. That's the amount of uh, heat that you want to get rid of from your body. Like your body is overheating and you need to get rid of that amount of energy. And then the latent heat of vaporization for water is on your uh, equation sheet. For water, it's 540. And that's in uh, calories per gram. And actually, in the equation sheet, I call this H. But you might also see it as L. So I'll make this into an H as well. Uh, and so 50,000 divided by 540, I get 93 grams. What is the mass of one liter of blood? All right, well, if I look up the density of blood, which is on your equation sheet under density of substances. It's 1.05 grams per cubic centimeter. All right, and you also need to realize that one milliliter 
is equal to one cubic centimeter. That's a cc, uh, which is equal to one cc. And so one liter is equal to a thousand cubic centimeters. All right, so I want to know the mass. The mass is the density times the volume. That's from our density relationship. And so that's 1.05 grams per cubic centimeter times 1,000. Oops. Times 1,000 cubic centimeters. So that's 1050 grams C. Boyle's law states that if the pressure increases, and the volume has to decrease. Whoop. The volume decreases. That's B. Which of these is possible? Made possible because of Bernoulli's principle. Remember, Bernoulli's principle says that if the velocity goes up, then the pressure goes down, and that makes liquid entrainment for respiratory therapy possible because you have this tube with a high velocity air or fluid or whatever traveling through it and then you can have this other tube here this reservoir of sorts and because I have high velocity here I get low pressure All right. uh, and so that brings these particles up into the flow because I have a low pressure in the tube and a high pressure outside of the tube that's liquid entrainment it's a variety of purposes which of these is not a fluid. A fluid is anything that flows, so not gasoline, water, or air. Is D. All right. A woman has a weight of 600 newtons when measured in air. She is submerged in water and weighed in the hydrostatic tank. The technician finds that she has a volume of 0.05 cubic meters. What is her apparent weight? All right. So I have this lady. She is on a scale, and that scale. She's submerged in water. All right. She has some forces acting on her. She has her buoyant force. Uh, she has her weight. And then she also has the force that the scale is reading. And that's what I want to know. So my force of the scale is equal to her weight minus the buoyant force. That is, you know, the force of the scale, what the scale is reading, plus the buoyant force is equal to the weight. And then so I can say that the force of the scale, which is her apparent weight, that's the weight that she appears to have, is equal to the difference in the weight and the buoyant force. I know her actual weight is 600 newtons. And then I can find her buoyant force. Her buoyant force is given by the density of the fluid times the volume of the object times the acceleration due to gravity. So that's 600 newtons minus a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. That's the density of water times the volume of the object, which is given 0 0.05 times nine point or times ten meters per second squared. Alright, so that's six hundred minus minus 500, which is equal to 100 newtons. So that's her apparent weight, is 100 newtons. Our manometer measures a person's systolic blood pressure to be 120 millimeters of mercury. What is this person's blood pressure in Pascals? All right, so <clears throat> this uh, pressure is equal to rho times g times h. And when I'm measuring blood pressure in this way, that refers to the height of that column. All right, so I want to know what is the pressure in Pascals. That's going to be this value. So I'm going to take the density of mercury. It's 13,000 kilograms per cubic meter. So it's very dense, more than 10 times the density of water, times G, which is 10 meters per second squared, uh, times H which is 0 0.120 meters. Converting that 120 millimeters to meters, I get 130,000 16,000 Pascals. 
So the answer is D. Man has a weight of five, 700 newtons in a tank. He's weighed, and the scale reads 500 newtons. What's the buoyant force? That's very similar to this problem over here. Uh, but here, my weight is 700 newtons. My buoyant force is 200 newtons. Excuse me. My scale reads 500 newtons. And so the buoyant force has to be 200 newtons. So that's 700 minus 500 equals 200 newtons. The following figure shows a Venturi. The gauge measures P1 and P2. Which of the following is true? All right. A couple things I need to know here. That my velocity V1 is less than V2. That when this fluid goes into this smaller area pipe, that the velocity goes up. And then, if the velocity goes up, according to Bernoulli's principle, the pressure goes down. So that means that the pressure at part two is less than the pressure at part one. So that's C is the answer for number 15.